Lovely. Thank you very much. And thank you again to Hype for uh, having me um, join the webinar channel again. Um, I'm really excited today to bring you um, our topic around um, innovation and um, you'll have to excuse my uh, other phone going off here. Let me just stop that. Apologies, Tim. Um, so yes, I'm very excited to be able to uh, talk to you today about how the Internet of Things is going to be changing um, business. And you know, as um, uh, from the outset, as, as Mikhail said, you know, I am an innovation enthusiast and I do love the connected industry and everything about Internet of Things and, and how it can um, really transform our opportunities both in our day-to-day -day lives and in our business. And today I want to bring um, some of the, our thoughts at Momentum Partners um, across to you and how you'll be able to achieve that within your business. So today I'm going to focus on three main areas, um, really just some perspective, you know, what, what really is the Internet of Things, what's happened in the past to shape the Internet of Things and, and how can we learn about that. And then uh, about our patterns, what is the technology and the business patterns we're starting to see emerge from IoT that we can be considerate of in our, um, in our development of strategies. And then our strategic postures, what's the right timing and the strategic postures that we can be taking on to make sure that as the Internet of Things grows and becomes more formidable in our day-to-day -day, uh, working lives that we're on board with that process. Um, a little bit about me, um, as, uh, as it says on the screen here, um, I am from Momenta Partners. We are a, an advisory executive search and venture firm focused on the connected industry. Um, and we focus from an advisory perspective on bringing connections, people, systems, strategies together around a growth focus for the connected industry. Um, our executive search brings outstanding connected industry leaders to business. Um, and in our ventures, we invest in young and starting um, connected industry or IoT companies and help build uh, a sustainable growth path for them. Prior to that, um, I was a uh, head of innovation for Brambles. Um, and in that, um, like many of you, I was driving uh, connected industry and IoT strategies as well as the general um, innovation program around the core business growth. So let's talk about the Internet of Things. So it's, it's certainly not new or novel, um, and it's been in the making actually for more than 20 years. Um, you know, back in 1994, we saw the Internet really come onto the world stage, and in turn, uh, you know, 10 years later, uh, we, we were seeing, uh, so 20 years later, we were seeing some of the largest Internet companies at the top of their game, Amazon, Google, eBay, everyday companies. Now what we're seeing is the next big wave of technology being the Internet of Things or the Internet of Everything. And um, it's creating, in turn, just like the Internet did, an entire new industry platform. So what actually is it? Basically, as it says here, sensors and objects linked together through the wireless world Everything's a thing. We, we're going to be seeing that in every part of our lives. And in fact, the majority of you, majority of you, even if you aren't aware of it, are already part of the Internet of Things. It's in our every single day life. I'm sitting here with a, a an Apple Watch on. Many of you are probably wearing Fitbits right now. Right through to home automation. Some of you might be able to control your your coffee machines or your your kettles by your phones or, or your lights. Um, I'm looking at putting a new smart lock on my um, on my door in my house that uses biometrics to be able to let people come in and out, um, or you know let the courier in through video controls that I can run from my phone um, if I'm not in the house, so I can make sure I always get my deliveries. All of these everyday conveniences are already part of our everyday life, and then of course it's coming into our business. So the breakthrough potential that you get from IoT, it, it basically comes from uncovering all of this additional but also potentially disruptive value by having real-time data feeds across multiple sources. Now, if you think about this from a business co uh, perspective, you know, you can walk into a store, it's going to know where you are looking at, um, for example, the um, um, Apple iBeacon, which you may have heard about, it, it can track where you are in the store, it can see how long you dwell at a certain place in that store, and it can learn about your behaviours as a customer, and it can under and, and see 
you know, what, how long does it take for you to make a purchase? Where do you look? How long do you look at certain places? What activity might you do on your phone while you're in that store? All of these sort of things are already starting to take place. But we're also seeing some of the more consumer IoT, like our wearable devices, move into business as well. So, for example, uh, a wearable device will allow a, a company to make their employees um, digitalize. So they're going to be able to track you as an employee, but more importantly, they can get feedback on, on the behaviors that might affect your well-being as an employee, but and also your job effectiveness, um, and in turn, you know, get better productivity across the whole workforce. But then you can take that same wearable and step it up another level. We probably hear a lot about wearables and how they're really transforming the health industry. Um, and not, in fact, not transforming it, disrupting it. Um, so using these wearables, we can start to uh, remotely monitor elderly or, or, or sick patients that might be in a uh, remote area or at home. Um, it'll allow hospitals to offer more lower cost um, care rather than bringing people back and forth from hospitals. But you know, even just from that, there's all of the uh, information that they're going to be able to take from these devices that we're going to be able to not just focus on when there's a problem, but also transform how we can maintain our health better. So these are just some very little examples of how we're seeing consumer I IoT that we're all getting very familiar uh, with start to transform into business and to change the way that business works. Uh, these are just some figures for you. Uh, I think there's a lot of questions. Is it a hype? Is it really going to happen? Well, there are some fairly large predictions here. That we're looking at a, nearly, you know, a 4 to $11 billion impact um, by 2025, which is really not that far away. So the, there is a lot of um, financial opportunity here as well as the changes to both our businesses and our lifestyle. One of the biggest things about the IoT that we need to be considerate of is it's actually what we call an ecosystem. And you'll probably start hearing this word if you're not already using it uh, day to day. It'll, it'll become more common to you. Um, in, in the past, when we've talked about innovation that is technology-led, we've often just said the most difficult decision we have is do we build it or do we buy it? And you know we can we've probably spent a lot of time over the boardroom table discussing that, but the decision and, and the discussion becomes a lot more different when you move into the IoT because it's, it is what we call an ecosystem. IoT technology, as you can see, has multiple levels against it. You start, as it says on the bottom, with things. You know these things could be telematic devices and vehicles. They could be wearable Fitbits. They could be very small sensors um, and any type of um, asset or, or a piece of equipment or you know anything that can actually fit a thing. It doesn't have to be a battery powered, uh, sorry, it doesn't have to have um, a, a fixed power. It can be a battery powered thing and it can communicate wirelessly. We have this new wave of technology called edge technology, which are the gateways that talk back and forth to the things and, and can make decisions about how the thing may operate based on the information it's getting back. We have a whole enablement of software platforms that can perform some really um, amazing analytics, both um, predictive maintenance, um, prescriptive maintenance. It can predict our behaviors um, as well as just alert us on what's happening. One of the biggest changes that we will have in business is really saying, uh, is being aware of this ecosystem and understanding that partnering across all of these areas within the ecosystem is going to become critical to your business developing solutions in the different verticals that you may work in. Here's a, um, <clears throat> an example of this um, that, that just sort of can show you the difference between what we call IoT and what you may have heard of as M to M, which is machine to machine, point to point. Uh, one of the companies that we actually have um, on our portfolio is called Plat One, um, and they provide an enter enterprise-grade IoT application platform. 
So if you remember the previous slide, they're, they're in that middle piece. Um, and this platform is used by a lot of large telcos um, in the industrial and industrial companies. And, and one of those is this is La Chabella, which is one of the largest industrial beverage machine companies in Europe. The first project that you can see there on the left, which was called Expresso, it was designed to connect their new um, machines, there was 50,000 of them, back to the manufacturer on an annual basis to basically communicate any vital operating information. So this was in turn giving that machine a voice back to the manufacturer to make some, some decisions. Now the next phase, which is currently in pilot, um, is now bringing this IoT ecosystem um, into the play where now the, pla the, the platform of communication is, is hosted. It's actually hosted by Telecom Italia. Um, and what it does is it's actually going to be now providing real-time data and analytics back to the, all the members of this coffee ecosystem. Um, so this is not now just your manufacturer, it's your engineer, it's the distributor, it's your sales, it's the coffee drinkers. And, uh, and by having this information and being able to mash it up and, and learn um, different things about it, it creates an ecosystem simply around this coffee machine. So the, this, this sort of gives you an example of how the different type of technology when we're talking from a point-to-point -point communication to having an IoT solution which opens up an entire ecosystem uh, and, and, and the differences in both of those. So to bring that in context, um, here is a um, business case that can uh, show you how we can sort of get more out of smart pumps. Um, so this is a real world in example. It involves uh, a company by the name of Grundoff, uh, which is a large manufacturer of pumps. So they make over about 12 million pumps per year, and one million of those is considered to be an intelligent pump. So what they're looking to do is to put about 100,000 of these intelligent pumps onto the internet um, each year over the forthcoming years. So the first part of this project was about um, efficiency. So they first wanted to say how can we actually um, put some um, technology and make these intelligent pumps give back enough information that we can monitor the performance, improve efficiency. But what they discovered very quickly along the way is that they can actually monetize these capabilities by um, value-added services. So, for example, energy efficiency savings as well as preventative and predictive maintenance. But then, of course, what emerged, which we're starting to see as, as the trend within um, potential business value, is that some of these companies were actually pre 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 excuse me, <coughs> preferring them to own and manage the pumps and just provide liquid management as a service. So we often hear about things being as a service, and, and this is essentially how it can be enabled. They've even designed a water purification as a service um, that they use in the emerging markets. So as you have a look at these different um, business value drivers, as we see it now, 85% of the focus today is still around um, driving out the efficiencies that they can gain through this technology-led innovation. 12% is on the value-added services, and only 3 uh, of the percent of the focus is on the product as a service. So what this, of course, is telling you is that we're still very much learning around how to use IoT as a business value driver for efficiency gains across the business, but being aware of these uh, larger uh, business model changes that can be in place shows the enormous amount of opportunity. There's only another 15% really of opportunity to gain for efficiencies, but a huge amount of opportunity by changing the business model to be a product as a service. So the timing of it, do you really need to act now? And my answer would probably be, say, be yes, you need to be thinking about acting now if you haven't already. So the reasons why, the first and foremost is you may get left behind. This is moving very quickly. Um, and your competition, if they don't have a strategy, I'm sure they're putting one together. Um, but more importantly, the rise of this technology actually enables new players into the market a, a, a lot easier than it has been in the past. So you need to think about having this 
on your strategy, uh, if not at the top or close to the top of your strategy. In fact, as you can see here in the McKinsey study, the Internet of Things is showing as number three of the top technology disruptors uh, uh, up until 2025. So, you know, if, if you're not going to do anything about it, it's going to disrupt your business anyway. You find that the market is actually going to start not only demanding it, but expecting it. I, at the upfront uh, of this webinar, I showed you the consumer IoT and how readily available it is to all of us. What, what you're going to now find is that people are just going to expect that to be available and to have levels of service available to them and a business scenario that they can have access to in the consumer world. And we can see here that the most popular applications of IoT today, number one and number two, smart homes and wearables, which are essentially consumer IoT. So we're going to start to see uh, smart cities, smart grids, all the industrial internet, right through to ag tech, your smart farming. That These are going to get more and more popular as people get more accepting of consumer IoT. And lastly, one of the reasons why you do or can act now is that the enabling technologies have become a lot more accessible. It's far easier uh, to acquire data than, than it ever has been before. And the technology itself has really dropped, as they predicted, has dropped in cost. So not only is it cheaper to get involved in the technology, it's also now faster. So as you, if you have a look here on the six major enablers for technology, you'll see that the adoption of mobile devices has gone up 320%. Again, this is speaking to consumers um, really driving um, what, what's happening in business through their acceptance and adoption of technology. The cost of sensors and bandwidth and processing has dropped enormously. And what we're also finding is uh, the, the technology itself is getting smaller. So, you know, Amazon, that picture, you've got a tiny little microprocessor. That has enormous control. It will probably be able to tell you, um, you know, its location, how, how its temperature. It can probably tell you how many times it, got, it, it has vibrated recently or been dropped. Um, you know, it can give huge amount of information about its location and um, how, how it's been treated and the behaviors around people who have been treating it. So, from a perspective of the huge amounts of information that we can get compared to the small size, it's, it's changed enormously. And then last is the, all the new big data tools and all the new infrastructure. So the technology around the platforms and the analytics that's so readily available now as part of that IoT stack has really um, enabled technology to be far more accessible and something that we can be using and piloting within our IoT strategies. So we, we talked a little bit about um, why we need to be doing it now. And then the, uh, what I wanted to focus on now is, a bit, is more the how. You know, how do we get organized? How do we develop the capabilities? Um, to really deliver IoT or technology-led innovation into the business. You, you've got a few options. So essentially, you can do nothing. You can do nothing and you can watch and see what happens. Now, there's a few things that might come out of that. You, you may actually find that the, um, you may actually find that the, um, it, it pays off because you're going to be getting information from other projects coming up at other times. You, you might find, though, that the competitors are simply going to take over and you're going to run out of um, runway as far as getting yourself up to speed just like them. The second option around your strategies is to enhance, um, is really just to do an incremental enhancing your business. So this is where we're talking about um, strategies that are, take less time, they have far, far less risk, um, but in turn, the payoff is a lot smaller. But you know, th this kind of incremental change to your business is, is important at the same time because you are going to have a lot of learning opportunities. When we talk about innovation, we often talk about doing cheap, quick, agile tests to learn as much as we can, to get as much information to, 
to prove our assumptions and uncertainties in our innovation. This is, this is an approach that you um, will be able to continue to follow through, the I, through your growth around IoT. Um, but what is really important is that you don't stop there. You also need to be thinking about your strategy for how IoT will transform your business. This is something that's obviously going to take more time, it's going to have far more cost, far more risk, but the payoff is going to be much greater. There is no reason why you cannot be running these um, strategies uh, at the exact same time, but it's really important that you do actually run them at the same time because as I'm sure you're, you're familiar with, sometimes you can be focused on the, the innovation that is per, perhaps nearer term and lose focus of the longer term innovation or, or uh, steal resources from the projects that are doing the longer term transformational projects. Um, in this case, it's important to really be able to have both streams of activity driving and, and heading to the same goal. So let's drill into enhancing your business and the steps um, that you can be taking in this space. So the first thing is look at existing cost reduction and risk management. So this is really looking and saying right now every single business will have some sort of cost reduction and risk management project in play. This is really taking a step back from the, the, the tactical side of that and saying well what exactly are we doing here? And is there some revenue and innovation potential here that we could really um, get onto, on the back of? What can we do within this process to perhaps bring some IoT technology into the, to the existing projects and, and, and not just reduce costs but, but look at some revenue potential? The second part is really expanding your product and customer lifestyle. So this is moving beyond the transactions that you all know and, and we're very familiar with, but really say, well, how can we instrument the world, uh, our products and our customer lifestyle world, and get insights both uh, about ourselves, our systems, uh, our customers, and our products that can e you know, either improve our performance, uh, or perhaps generate revenue. So some examples of this, so in the retail sector, they, they're already doing this and doing it very well. They're looking at how they can benefit from real-time data to move beyond the transactional information that they see about their customers and, and their products. So uh, for example, um, many of you may be familiar with Tesco, a UK-based retailer. So they use their store loyalty cards to essentially track our, our visits. Um, they can learn about our buying behaviors, our payment modes. Um, they can also learn everything about our effect that we have, our, our individual customer effect on their, their products. So by paying really close attention to the customer, life, the customer's life cycle and the product life cycle, you, this retailer in this example has been able to dynamically adjust all of the merchandise across all of the different stores to suit the lo local tastes, um, the, the, uh, they customise the offers um, based on what they've learned, they can man manage their inventory far better and in turn they can refresh it in a much easier and cheaper way. So they have seen very tangible results from this very simple exercise um, both around improved sales, um, improved customer loyalty and of course improved performance within in all of the stores. Um, Apple, I mentioned them before, they, they, they do this as well with their eye, eye beacons. So they have the location and proximity detection within all of their stores which interacts with the uh, mobile devices that they're using. So when a customer is ready to purchase, they can view the behaviours that that customer has, has executed to get to that point of, of purchase. And, and this they're finding is giving them much better strong relationships with customers as well as of course improving their sales. The next step is really to think about how to get involved and start piloting some low risk yet high impact IoT. IoT, doesn't, IoT projects does not essentially mean you throw everything you know traditionally about um, strategy and how to 
innovate within the business out the window. This is just a new enabler of technology, giving you greater opportunity. So therefore, when you're thinking about how to enhance your business, still looking at targeted small projects and the focus on things that are going to have the greatest impact still is the, the, the um, first and foremost place to start. So for example, you know, if, you're, if you're finding, um, you know, when you look under the covers of the business um, and let's say you're, the biggest issue is that um, the biggest financial um, pain point in your business is revenue growth. You might drill down a little bit more and say, well, you know, we're, the revenue growth is coming from a customer churn rate. So um, in turn, you know, what we may have done in the past is spend more time doing voice of customer. We might have done more surveys. We might have asked our customer representatives to get out and get more involved with customers. You know, all sorts of um, different engagements to tr try and prove that in a churn rate. But when we actually look closer, what we, we find is that the, the frustration for this churn rate is coming because um, it's taking a very long time for any um, machinery, if it gets break, uh, broken, um, to have a service person come out and repair it. So it, it could simply be that, that simple. So now we have something that is, is very tangible and something that we can work with. And then in this case, we could put some sensor-based IoT and technology in um, you know, if it's our own machinery, we could put some technology in that can monitor the performance, that can anticipate breakdowns, and this in turn is going to provide a, a, a play a very significant role in increasing that customer satisfaction and in turn reducing the churn rate. So it's really going to move the needle as far as the overall company performance. Now again, you know, that, that sounds very, very simple, but it's a way of taking small low risk steps that have really great um, impact to the business to both um, deliver value but give you a platform for learning and getting started with an IoT. <clears throat> Expanding value with existing data, um, I, I'm sure many of you have heard that you've got a lot of data in your businesses and, and typically what actually happens is the data sits in, in silos. Um, what, what you have really there is an, is an amazing opportunity to actually look at the existing data that you've got um, and, and perhaps mash it up. Um, you, you start hearing the term mash up a lot, which is really a way of saying let some, um, you know, let, get it into a data analytics platform um, and be able to leverage as, as much value out of the existing data that you have. And then you can look to augment that existing data with extra um, little pieces of sensory information from IoT data to really give that more context. So for example, um, a company called WAS, which is a navigation application, um, they had um, a facility that went between mobile GPSs um, and to, to their vehicles. So they're essentially just communicating with their own vehicles um, without any action from the driver, something that's been around for a really long time. Um, what they can then do is look at other data sources and overlay that. So overlaying with traffic information, um, which they can present back to, to the driver, um, and then they can optimize their routes. And that, again, is a really simple example and something that's already around today. But by using this extra information in predictive analytics, this driver can have greater insights and in turn perform better and provide greater satisfaction to the customer. So the, the use of this data and being aware of what you've already got is, is, is an exercise worth, worth doing, um, albeit probably it feels like a big job, but once you start to see all these data silos and, and think about how valuable they could be when you bring that information together and then look to augment it in some of the gap areas, you, you will find that there's going to be huge value out of that. Now, from a technology perspective, you know, it, it might sound challenging bringing so many data pieces together, but if you reflect back to the, um, the technology stacks that start to be in place with IoT, there is one that you may remember in the middle, which is around platforms, application platforms. These are specifically designed pieces of technology that sit in this technology stack to bring these data silos together in a way that's far easier 
um, and quicker than ever before and then present that data back to an analytics system. So the technology does exist to make this process a lot easier. Um, the, real, the real value in it is, of course, analyzing the data and saying, how can we get the most out of this? How can we mash it up and augment it to get some really exciting information? The, 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 the last thing, which um, often always is at the end of a list and perhaps should be the first thing that we talked about, but it's really about establishing security and transparency. Some of the challenges that, that do happen with IoT, and, and we're probably experiencing it in our personal lives as well, is that with, um, with opening up data and having so many data um, there are security concerns. There are concerns both that your data can be um, stolen off the internet, um, or there's concerns around, well, what are people really doing with it? So it's very important whatever um, step you're at on your IoT journey that you think about security early, you think about it being both preventative and responsive and coming, and coming up with uh, solutions that um, both strengthen your, the, uh, the areas um, where you could have breach as well as rapidly detecting it and mitigating any of those sort of breaches. Um, and, and the last point on the transparency is it's really about uh, user trust. In order to get the most out of IoT and all the data that has been collected, um, your customers or the people for, for whom you're taking the data from need to be able to know and trust that you are using it appropriately. So this is, by, this is offering full transparency to users about what data you're collecting and, and how it is being shared within your ecosystem. Um, and also, you know, give them the ability to see it if, if they want, want to see it. So an example, <coughs> excuse me, of, 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 of this transparency is a lot of insurance companies. So they're using the driving data um, to, um, to establish different rates around insurance. So this is, this is transparent. They're saying to you as a driver, we will track how you drive, your driving behaviours, um, and then in turn we will use that data to come up with an uh, insurance program that is customised to you. Um, and, and people are generally okay with it as long as they know and trust that it's been used in the way that you've said. So transforming a business, of course, is an entirely different um, can of worms. Um, so what we're finding with the Internet of Things is not only is it going to enable, but in some cases it's actually going to force new uh, business models. Um, so this might mean um, creating entire new lines of businesses. It might simply mean that we're going to change the way uh, that we price or, or we, use, we, we, we service our existing um, businesses. So, you know, for example, a retailer might create a new revenue stream by selling the advertising in their store as well as the things in their store. So th these are just some, just some different examples. So there's sort of three main buckets of ways that you can really look to transform your business um, using IoT as, as the uh, enabler for that. The first one is around uh, new pricing models. So I already mentioned um, the insurance example uh, on the previous slide, um, but essentially these um, th these uh, insights into um, how your product is being um, both um, purchased, both distributed, um, how the how a customer is going around going about buying it, how your customer inter uh, interacts with the product when they have it. The product itself, how it, how it, uh, where it is, how it feels, how it's being treated, um, all of this information is essentially available, and this this um, gives a great opportunity for you to be able to put together pricing models based on specific customer preferences as well as their usage, um, and this is both beneficial for your customers and uh, and and for your business. Anything as a service, um, I, I think we, we talked a bit about it when we were talking about pump, having pump as a service, um, but you know, as soon as you start to be able to put um, IoT sensors on, um, on, on anything, 
you then have the ability to enable an anything as a service business model. So this can be for all kinds of products um, and you essentially are shifting from selling the product to selling a service of that product. Um, the, you know, this, there's lots of examples around, the, around this. Um, you know, some people like um, a gas turbine, turbine company sells power by the hour. Um, transportation services uh, are starting to, uh, you know, instead of buying a car, you can just go and, you, you know, get the keys and go and use a car and, and give it back and you just pay for the service of, of the time that you've, you've used it. Um, not only does this change your entire business model and give you an, a, a, different, um, a different way of going to market, it also can better maintain um, your equipment and give you, um, you know, if you, if you have equipment of course, um, and remove maintenance burdens um, from both from your customers um, and both of those things are beneficial. You know, one, you're going to be able to look after your own products and your own assets. Uh, and be responsible for that without the customer having to be responsible for it. And of course taking that burden away from a customer builds a long-term relationship. So there's financial implications um, in, in, in anything as a service business model um, and, a, and a, a, as well as longevity of customer relations. Uh, and finally, um, the one of the other um, transformation options is to really monetize your IoT data. So there's, there will be an exhaustive amount of data um, and it in turn could become a profit center depending on your line of business. So you know, it, it, any data describing any consumer behavior is going to be of huge value to a lot of people. Um, data about physical assets like buildings and vehicles, um, you know, insurers are going to want to know about that from insurance risk. Um, so, you know, essentially your data that you may, you may use for your own purposes but then have a whole lot of it left over might not be all that valuable to you but it could be um, huge value to, to somebody else. Um, so thinking about how you might be able to monetize that is another consideration. Of course, pr uh, privacy, confidentiality, ownership rights, all of those sort of things need to be thought through very carefully. Um, but you know, there, there is an opportunity there where you do have extensive data to be able to monetize that. As this is an entirely um, new way really of doing business. We talked about the fact that it's not just build and buy, so it's not just about partnering with one technology company, um, it's not about um, your, your typical technology stacks, so it, you know, it might require a whole different set of skills within your business to, to realize the potential um, of IoT-led growth. So some of those types of skills that you would need within the connected industry uh, are as follows. So the first one is partnering. So organizations are going to be far, far more expensive from your, your traditional silos. So where you would have um, been just having a few partnerships um, here or there, these, these are now going to be full ecosystems. You're going to find that your, your competitors could very quickly become your customers at the same time. Your relationships across all of these different um, networks uh, needs to be very, very tight. You need to be all working together within your ecosystem to develop the, 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 the final value out of IoT. Changing the way that we, that we work and our, our mindsets is, is, is also uh, an area that needs to be thought through. So our traditional uh, and conventional mindsets of how we make decisions is, is going to be challenged. So people will have to really look at the data um, or look at, look at the outputs even of the data and, and be prepared to act. Uh, it's a little bit like the cars. Um, you, know, you, you can get a car now that will park for you. Um, you know, I, I have a car that does it and I, I absolutely love it. I use it um, all, all the time. It's far safer than me attempting to do it. However, my mother has the same technology in her car and her mindset will just simply not let her do it. And despite the fact she has it, 
she will she just simply won't use it. So it's in order to really embrace IoT led growth, we need to change the mindsets um, of everyone within our business to drive um, to 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 use data to make change. This is where um, you know us as innovators really come to the forefront because we we have the opportunity to conduct a lot of um, lean and agile and innovative approaches within our day-to-day -day work and it will become something that is more common, um, more common than not across business. I, I certainly know when I was a, a leader, an innovation leader, I was often challenged with the cultural aspects of innovation and trying to drive an agile and innovative mindset across the business. Um, this will start to get easier um, as IoT becomes more and more embedded in our day-to-day -day work. It won't be a separate thing. It won't be that we sit down and say, um, oh, this came through IoT. It, IoT is just the enabler. It's just the word that, that brings this all together. It will be just as part of your normal day-to-day -day business. And the change that we will start to see um, will, be, will be fast and it will be agile and, and uh, and in turn, people will get more and more used to that level of change happening. There's different ways to innovate um, than, than ever before outside of um, just building and buying, as I've said. But some of the areas that um, more traditional businesses have probably not really got involved with as far as um, innovative-led growth is looking at more things like corporate venturing, maybe taking some um, small bets and some startup investments that could potentially be the next best thing for IoT technology for their industry. Um, the strategic partnerships that um, that should be that need to be in place that may not have ever needed to be in place in the past. So thinking about how to really um, embrace that agility in different ways that haven't haven't necessarily been the most traditional approach in the past is going to be a real key uh, factor and a, an important skill to master amongst your team. So uh, finally, um, just some best practices to think about as you go about bringing your IoT strategy together. Um, it's really important that you find the, a connected leader. Um, it's, it's, it, this, is, this is something where you need somebody who's got a lot of experience across the industry. Um, they also have the depth of knowledge um, within technology to deliver this type of strategy. And of course, we need someone who's going to be entirely inspirational, someone who's going to um, you know, have no trouble changing the mindsets of the business around being data-led and, and you know, making this an exciting new change for the business. We really recommend um, through Momenta Partners that um, everybody sets up an advisory board um, along this connected industry journey. And it doesn't need to be a huge board of people and it doesn't need to be um, a, a laborious process. We recommend three, uh, three advisors to support um, your connected industry journey. One that is in your domain, who knows your domain very, very well and is a leader within your domain. Two, somebody who um, has a technical, somebody who can understand the technology that you're looking at and advise you uh, appropriately. And third, somebody who has a strategic mindset around how to grow businesses through connected industry-led technology. Look to create an acceleration team. We talked about having um, some quick tests and things that you can do and um, on you know, identifying specific financial pain points and, and running some quick tests and projects along those to make high impact. You need an appropriate team to do this and it should be a cross-functional team. This is really no different to any type of innovation that you're probably trying to drive across your business. Um, but ensuring that you've got the right team in place that can drive the concepts and pilots out is essential. Create your ecosystem. Find the, find the right partners, the right people, the right systems, all the things that you need in your ecosystem that are both going to uh, help you grow but also could potentially disrupt you. Um, the, you, you can learn a lot from everybody within your ecosystem, but you can also get access to resources and information that was never probably available before. And then finally, you know, develop your, con your, your, your capabilities to be able to very quickly come up with an idea, test it, pilot it, and scale it. 
that by being able to do this in, in a, a repeatable fashion across all the ideas that you might have around IoT and delivering IoT, you're going to be able to both uh, enhance your business as a strategy as well as work on ways to continue to transform your business as a longer term strategy. So in summary, you know, the IoT is not new or novel, it's, it's not a thing, you're not going to come to work one day and do IoT, it's just going to be part of your business. Um, you, you've seen that there's already transformation um, impact happening, so we're starting to see patterns emerging, we're moving from efficiency, um, efficiency gains to value-added services to anything as a service opportunities and, and it's a journey that, that needs to be taken um, in order, and, and, fo and, and will deliver some real impact. And finally, you know, where are you going to sit from a strategy perspective? You can, you know, there really isn't sitting out, so you want to either enhance your business um, or transform your business. If you think you've got it in you to do both at the same time, um, you know, you, you, you know, have a go at it, but never take your, your eye off one or the other strategy um, because that, that can quickly happen. So I wish you all um, the best of luck in your um, connected industry journey and your IoT, developing your IoT strategies. Um, I think um, at this point we will um, open up for questions. Um, I, I also might just point out at the end of the session um, there will be a um, a sorry a survey coming around um, and you know I, I've talked at a very very high level about IoT today um, so if you are interested in sort of doing some more deep dives onto IoT um, you know with myself and the other partners within the Momentum Partner team please put put that into your um, summary and we will certainly be able to help with that so at this time if there's any questions um, I will um, pass uh, over to um, Mikhail to help facilitate that. Sure, right. Um, so far, no questions. Um, if you have any, please post them now. Also, we're closing in at the end of the hour now, so would be great. Of course, you can come back to us at any time and either address me directly or Lauren and um, post your questions to us directly afterwards. Just so you know, um, of course, as always, you will receive a follow-up email containing the link to the presentation and to the recording. Ah, here's one. How important is the choice of IoT software platforms in terms of impact on business? Um, I'm just going to go back to that slide. Uh, look, it, it, essentially it depends on, on what you're trying to do. Um, I'm going to bring the ecosystem slide up to talk. So the, 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 the platform, um, uh, if, you're, if you're talking about the, the software platform right in the middle, um, it, it is a very important choice because you need to find a, soft, a software platform that um, can um, really enable all the other parts of the technology. Um, what you'll start to find is when you start looking at software platforms, which are typically um, you would look to, to a solution provider who would have a relationship with the a applications um, platform company. Um, what you'll start to find is that software platforms are, are being designed specifically for verticals. Um, and the more you can look for something that's within your vertical, um, the better, because that means that they ha they've had um, if they're a young company, they will have had some early market traction through pilots within that vertical. If they're a more mature company, then you know they've got an, they've got an existing business around around that vertical. Where a, a software platform, um, some of the things you want to look for is you want to make sure that they are hardware um, agnostic. Um, so by that, you don't want to get a software platform that says you always have to use pink widgets on all of your sensors. Um, because then you're forever having pink widgets. The, um, the, the technology is changing so much um, that you want to be in a position that you can also easily adapt with that technology as well. So finding something that's interoperable, um, that is uh, easily able to connect with many types of um, different edge, edge technologies will be important. 